Hi there, my friends. This is Sarah and welcome to my channel. I hope everybody is healthy and happy right now. I want to talk through masks and this is not something I would usually be covering on an art uh, channel, but with the current situation, uh, I think we need to uh, need to talk about this. And there's a couple of things. Um, one, um, the best kind of mask that you can get is a pre-made mask, right? Um, it's better than a homemade mask uh, because it's better at filtering out particulates. That being said, this is not available to everybody. I mean, uh, my husband and I are lucky that we have uh, P95 masks. And the difference between a P95 and an N95 is that these are oil resistant because they're used in, with, for paint. Um, and those type of household um, household uh, stains and solvents, solvents and paints, um, whereas an N95 mask is not. So there's that. Um, also, part of the reason these are uh, better, not only do they filter a, part, a smaller particulate size than a homemade mask made with fabric, but also they're easier to wear and more comfortable because they have these like cool flow valves, um, they have wire uh, up in the nose are form fitted, um, the elastic, you know, is more comfortable to wear, etc. However, not everybody has access to these right now, um, especially our uh, medical providers. And so I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to make some homemade masks using uh, fabric. Uh, and I won't be using elastic because I know that's in short supply right now. I will be making them with ties. So we'll uh, get into that. I want to talk a little bit about masks and uh, how to use a homemade mask and uh, the science, right? Because there's actual science that people have uh, completed, right? I guess studies, people have completed tests on fabric and how useful it is compared to an N95 or P95 mask. Okay, so let's get into that. So let's talk about DIY masks. And um, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, where the data is coming from for this because uh, certainly you shouldn't just take my word for it. You should absolutely the information and make your own assessment uh, for something that's important about your health. Uh, I am getting um, my information from the University of Cambridge and it was summarized very nicely by smartairfilters.com. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and find that source and uh, my reference for this. What's important is that uh, you use a uh, tightly woven piece of fabric. And so I have uh, quilting fabric, a, a nice quality quilting fabric. Um, there's tea towels, t-shirt material is also nicely tightly woven. Uh, and pick something, um, it's important that you pick something that will be comfortable for you to wear um, for however long the duration is you're planning on wearing it for. And also that you can sew easily. I'm lucky enough to have a sewing machine. Not everybody is. So you may be um, doing hand sewing or maybe even gluing, right? So something to consider when you're choosing your fabric. So the study that the scientists, well, it's a summary of studies, but from the University of Cambridge, they, t they looked at whether DIY masks can capture viruses uh, after the 2009 H1N1 flu pandemic. And so they were predicting that we might run out of the N95 masks. And unfortunately, uh, that's true. So they went ahead and uh, asked volunteers to make their own masks using cotton t-shirts and a sewing machine. And it's a, uh, a pleated version, like a surgical mask. So what they saw was that a DIY mask made from cotton t-shirt captured 69% of one micron particles. And a surgical mask captured 96.4%. So absolutely a homemade mask is better than, based on this, a homemade mask is better than wearing nothing, um, but not as good as a surgical mask. And a surgical mask is not necessarily N95, right? All right. So they wanted to then look down and see if how well a, a DIY mask would capture uh, smaller particles, so 0.02 micron particles. And these particles, the 0.02 micron particles, are smaller than a coronavirus particle, according to uh, the information I've read. And when they, when they did their tests, they found out that the cotton t-shirt mask captured 50% uh, 
50.9%, but we'll just call it 50% of particles even smaller than the coronavirus, where the surgical mask captured 89.5%, so about 89%. Now, that just shows you, again, that the surgical mask captured more particles, but the homemade cloth mask still captured 51% of those nanoparticles. One of the things that we hear a lot about is that a face mask, a homemade face mask, is, is leaky, and, and it is compared to uh, a surgical mask or one of these N95 masks. Uh, that being said, they tested that as well, and they have a machine that they can test that. And what they saw was the DIY mask blocked 50% of, you know, 50% of the particles, and the surgical mask blocked 80% of the particles. So I think that is still, and that's from the 0.02 to 1 micron range. So um, still we're seeing that it is better uh, uh, and based on this, the researchers concluded that it is better to have a homemade mask than nothing. So, uh, with that being said, you know, this is not the only testing that was done. They tested while people were actually wearing the masks. And what they saw, they, uh, then they wanted to see how long you could wear those DIY masks. Now, what's interesting about this, they looked at the mask effectiveness before and after wearing it for three hours. So if you wear a mask for three hours, right, it's going to get wet. And any mask, it's going to start getting wet. The breath, your breath moisture, the moisture from your breath is going to start collecting in it. So when they looked at this, they saw that after being worn for three hours, the homemade mask made from a dish towel or a tea towel started off capturing 63% of the particles and afterwards, um, after wearing it for three hours, actually captured about 5% more particles, which is surprising. Whereas the surgical mask was at 77.7% .7 and after three hours was at 78.1%. So pretty much the same. And an N95 mask started at 99.1% and after three hours dropped to 98.2%. So with that being said, that's a summary of the Cambridge, uh, Cambridge tests that were done. And they did additional tests for homemade masks for children. And um, uh, basically they are saying that the bottom line is that for DIY masks made with a single layer of cotton clothing or tea towel can remove between 50 and 60% of virus sized particles. So it means that they are not doing as well in performance as a surgical mask or an N95 mask. And wearing your homemade mask for three hours had no significant effect on filtration efficiency. So uh, that being said, I'm not going to cover children in masks. That's something that um, you need to read about on your own. There's some information on the smartairfilters.com page and, of course, the Cambridge studies as well. And there's plenty of information online. So I encourage you to go out and look at that. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about here is how to wear a mask and mistakes you can make wearing a mask. So compare wearing a homemade mask versus wearing a disposable mask. Okay, so there are mistakes that you can make wearing a mask. Um, and people make them routinely, especially if you're not used to wearing personal protective equipment. The best thing to do is wear a disposable mask. Um, a one-time-use one, used, one -time use mask because what happens is you cro can cross-contaminate with a mask. If you're wearing a mask, the outside surface, whatever's landed on that outside surface is on the outside and not in your lungs, right? <laughs> Which is where you want it to not be, isn't it? You don't want it in your lungs. Same with a, a DIY mask. It hopefully is capturing things on the outside. You take off your mask and you set it down on a countertop, you stuff it in your purse, um, Etc. you know, you pull it up over your face um, and the outside touches your face, you've cross-contaminated those surfaces. You touch the outside of it with your hands, um, you've cross-contaminated your hands. So it's very important for homemade masks, um, and we'll be turning this one up, this cloth, of course, into one, but um, for homemade masks that you don't cross-contaminate, that with, you wear them and then you put them into the wash um, right away so they don't cross-contaminate and you uh, clean them so you know to the point of killing 
uh, whatever is on the outside of them. If you do touch your face and, you know, touch your face, your mask, wash your hands. And the best thing you can do, um, according to what I've heard and what I've been, what I've been hearing from the doctors on, um, the doctors and reading and things is to wash your hands often and after you touch things um, and don't touch your face. The thing is um, you wear the same mask all day so this is definitely can be an issue. Uh, a mask usually is changed or disinfected about every two hours because um, you're breathing in and the outside of the mask gets dirtier and dirtier right. Uh, so virus par viral particles, bacteria, things accumulate on the outside the more that accumulate, the more likely they are to come through and uh, you're more likely to breathe them in. So if you're going to be out all day, it's good to uh, potentially take a number, um, maybe more than one mask with you and have a way to, when you take off your homemade mask, um, when you're changing it out, uh, to put have a place to put it um, that will keep other things around you uh, clean. So. Um, for me, I keep a Ziploc bag that I can dispose of uh, when I get home. I know that's not as eco-friendly as uh, we would like, but that's uh, my current solution to this. And when I get home, um, I can put any masks I've worn directly into the wash. Uh, the other thing about masks is you have to wear them on your whole face. <laughs> you have to cover your nose. You have to wear them over your nose, all the way past your mouth and under your chin. That's how you keep the mask um, fitting as well as possible and uh, make sure that you are breathing through the mask, not around the mask. Honestly, this is, people take them off of their nose and mouth, nose and or mouth, because it's uncomfortable to wear a mask for that length of time. It's hot, it's harder to breathe, and it's humid. Um, people feel stifled, and so they'll take the mask down. So, it's very important that if you're in a situation, you're wearing a fabric that is comfortable for you. And so some people are lining their masks with like a flannel because it's softer for your face. Um, there are versions of the mask where you can put in a wire so that it keeps it more comfortable over the bridge of your nose and also helps you create a better seal around your face. Um, again, these types of masks um, have a respirator, uh, like a, what they call the cool flow valve, right? A little place that helps fresh air come in because these fit so tightly around the face. Um, so something to keep in mind when you're making this, um, you know, are you going to be comfortable wearing flannel in the summertime? I don't know. And this is a personal preference in some ways, but uh, wear the tightest weave fabric you can. Uh, if you're making a homemade mask that's comfortable that you'll keep your mask on because uh, that's really uh, important. And don't be dropping it down below your nose and mouth. Um, the other thing is you want to put your mask on before you go into an area of risk. So, you know, you don't put your mask on once you walk into a surgical suite, right? You put it on before that. And so similarly, you're going to put your mask on before you go out grocery shopping, before you even walk into the grocery store. You know, you need to put your mask on. And uh, I know several people that put their mask on in their car and uh, then they get out and they go and do their shopping. They get back to their car, they unload their groceries, they do everything. They take off their mask, put it in their Ziploc bag. They alcohol their hands, um, alcohol their keys, anything else they've touched, get in their car and their car then is, you know, um, safe space. So I think that's um, important to think about and just think about ways that you can avoid cross-contamination for yourself and others. So another thing to think remember is that a mask is not 100% reliable. We just went through those statistics. So it decreases the risk, but ultimately the most important thing we can do according to all of the experts right now is to have our social distancing and make sure that we are staying up, staying away from people um, by at least six feet and staying home as much as possible. Um, we're directed by your local uh, local government uh, because the surgical mask is uh, not designed to provide a barrier between your respiratory system and all the viruses and bacteria, right? Um, what keeps you away from those viruses and bacteria that are being sneezed and coughed in the air um, 
uh, is social distancing because not everybody knows they're sick yet um, or they're putting it off to, you know, maybe they think it's just allergies or they think they have the flu and not coronavirus, um, uh, you know, or whatever. So just keep that in mind. This is just an extra, this will be an extra layer of support um, for when you have to go grocery shopping, you have to go get your medicine, you have to interact with people, um, but it's by no means the best way to keep from getting um, keep from getting sick. So the next thing is, you know, if you apply any chemical to a one use mask that makes it wet, that's bad. So you don't want to saturate a mask. And so applying any chemical, even Lysol to a mask that makes it wet is bad. You know, if you uh, uh, saturate it, the material in general will be less uh, less able to protect and and uh, because for many reasons I won't go into that but don't saturate them and um, even the one use masks or the um, uh, fabric um, so the other thing we have to think about is making sure that you're wearing uh, wearing your mask correctly. So if you have a, um, you know, clearly if you have like this type of mask, it's clear. I mean, your face goes into the, the concave side of the mask. But if you have a typical surgical mask, um, there'll be two sides to it. And actually, let me just grab, I have one of those. Um, let me grab one. All right, here's a surgical mask and with one dog fur on it. Well, anyway, that's my house. Um, there's little dog furs on things sometimes, <laughs> anyhow, surgical mask. And as you can see, this is a one-time use mask. It's got metal up in the top. You can see that it's nice and stiff there to form this around your nose. So this would be the top. This is the bottom. You can see it's coordinate, color coordinated. So, you know, not just by feel, but by looking at it, these are elastic loops. They're soft elastic. So they're more comfortable to wear. And when you flip it over on this side is a soft cottony white side. So you know this is the inside of the mask. So that's how you know what the inside and the outside of the mask are. That being said, when you make your own mask, you have to make sure that you know the inside and the outside. So for this mask, where I'm gonna be using one sheet of, um, this is a 14 by eight piece of fabric, uh, it's important that I mark the inside and the outside of the mask because uh, you always wanna use the correct side of your mask. It's good practice. Okay, so that being said, um, what is the difference in masks? So an N95 mask or a P95 mask filters out 95% of bacteria and viruses if they're correctly fitted to your face. And so that's what a healthcare worker wants to use to better protect themselves when they're caring for a sick patient. A surgical mask like this is designed to contain droplets to help protect those around you. So if you're sneezing uh, or coughing um, or sweating around your face, this will stop that from getting on other people, right? Um, and contains your breath a little bit. So a fabric mask is going to be similar and um, similar in the style as a surgical mask where you are actually uh, protecting those around you by making sure that your mucus and saliva don't get on other people, right? Um, so still, the best thing you can do, I mean, you should wear a mask in public according to um, the U.S. government currently. The CDC says this and uh, the White House agreed. So they say to wear a mask outside, even if it's a DIY mask, if you're going to go uh, be where there are other people, like a grocery store, uh, well, the only places we can really go right now are the grocery store and the pharmacy, right, for essential things, but uh, wear your mask. Uh, that being said, if everybody else is wearing a mask around you, that helps. Um, and the best thing you can do is to stay at home as much as possible, continue your social distancing as much as possible. Um, so stay home. It's uh, the number one way you can save lives around you. And uh, make sure that you avoid cross-contamination. You wash your hands often and after you touch things, especially don't touch your face. Um, and uh, 
Okay, I said I know I keep saying wash your hands, but wash your hands, stay home. Uh, all right, so that is the overview of face masks. And now I'm going to show you how to make a simple face mask that you can wear. And uh, this is based off a pattern from Deaconess. Um, this is the style that they were asking people to make when they were short on supplies. So um, that's the kind I'm going to make. And it comes with, again, I'm not using elastic because elastic is in short supply in many places. Um, so I'm going to make it with ties. And uh, you can change it out for elastic if you like. I will put the I'll put the link to the pattern, um, the pattern for this uh, in the description box so you can make this version. There's a few other different styles and I'll put links to uh, different styles of face masks so you can uh, uh, choose the best version for you. Hi, okay, so let's talk about what you're going to need to make this mask with ties. And again, I'm using a pattern from Deaconess, um, which is a reputable uh, reputable hospital and it's really very simple uh, you're going to for one mask need one 8 by 14 inch piece of cotton fabric make sure that your fabric is pre-washed because that will prevent shrinkage and um, also the overall like once you sew it together if you wash it and you haven't pre-shrunk your fabric then it could uh, make the uh, entire project get malformed so because it'll shrink in different ways so pre-wash your fabric uh, iron your fabric because uh, you want to work with a nice rectangle um, you're also going to need uh, two one and a half by 34 inch strips of fabric and that's to make the ties that would go on the side um, you can consider just using if you have this uh, bias tape as well um, I already have bias tape that I made from a quilting project, so um, which actually matches this fabric. So I'm going to go ahead um, and use this because it's pretty and it's nice to have something pretty, right? Um, if you have to wear it. All right. And then you're also going to need um, scissors um, if you are a uh, not comfortable with holding the pieces of fabric together as you sew so straight seams that's okay like not everybody you don't have to be an expert to make these um, just have some pins right so that you can keep your fabric together and put everything together uh, and uh, also you're going to want to either have a needle and thread because you'll you can hand stitch this um, preferably if you have a sewing machine it'll make your life a lot easier um, so you'll want thread and a sewing machine and uh, you don't have to use an all cotton thread. This is not a quilting project. Um, you can use a polyester blend, um, uh, which will be fine. Um, but make sure you use a thread that's sturdy. So I tend to use Coates and Clark threads. I have really good luck with them, but uh, use whatever thread makes your life simple. You don't want to be fighting it for sure. Now, this is going to be um, a pretty straightforward preparation and sewing project. So the first thing you're going to do is to identify, um, after you cut out your 8 by 14 inch piece, you're going to identify the front and the back of the fabric. And you're going to make several of these. I recommend making one and then set up an assembly line. Cut out all of your pieces of fabric, cut out all of your ties, um, and then sit down in front of your sewing machine and, and start sewing. That will make your life easier and you'll, you'll be able to make more masks at once, at one sitting. So once you have your mask, you're going to first of all go ahead and fold it in half and you're going to fold it on the um, so that the short edges come together and what you're going to end up doing is you're going to uh, sew right a one quarter inch seam down the short side and it's going to make a tube um, once you make that tube you're going to turn it right sides out so you're going to flip it out and you can already see that this is starting to take the shape of a mask. So let's go ahead. I'm going to sew this quarter inch seam allowance and I'll show you how to do that on the sewing machine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and sew a quarter inch seam allowance here. Again, on the short side. Though it's a straight seam, I'm going to go ahead and pin my fabric just so you can, in case you're um, new and you don't, you know, you don't feel comfortable stitching, uh, stitching without pins you can see it's fine right it's just fine to stitch with pins so for my machine here 
um, my needle is going to come down where this red mark is approximately. Let me get that string so that thread so you can see a little bit better. It comes down right about there, so maybe you can see that a little bit. Okay. And so for a quarter inch seam allowance, that's the inside edge of my presser foot. So I'm just going to keep it on the inside edge here, the straight edge of my fabric. I'm going to go ahead and put my presser foot down, make sure my needle go in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my needle down, and we're going to go ahead and sew. So the stitch I have will automatically um, create a knot at the beginning and end of this, so we'll get going here. Cut the thread and pull the mask out, and you can see there a really nice quarter inch seam. Well, maybe you can't actually flip this right. There it is, a nice quarter inch seam down the entire short side of this fabric. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and flip it inside out. Let me move the sewing machine out of the way, flip it inside out, and then I'm going to press it. Okay, so here's our tube, right? The tube you probably hear Bobby back there. My vacuum robot. I love that thing. It's my favorite. It runs a little bit every day. And I still have to vacuum, of course, but it um, it's great. Okay, so now we have this. We turned it right side out, and you can see that seam that we, that quarter inch seam is now there. And you can see that would be easy to do by hand if you needed to. And we're going to go ahead and press it, and we're going to put in three pleats, which I'm going to press as well, um, which I'm going to press as well with my iron. So I like to use pins when I do pleats. Um, that is your call. And you're just going to make three pleats. That's pleat one. And we're going to do the same. We're going to grab it underneath with our fingers, and we're going to pinch it. If you make pie dough, this should be a very natural thing for you. If not, you might have to play with it a little bit, but you're going to pinch it again. Pleat two. Pleat three. And then at the top, I'm going to do my third pleat here, because that's where I have the best fabric. So I'm just going to make a third pleat here. That looks good to me. All right, and so you can see already how that's starting to look like that um, uh, surgical mask, right? And one thing as you're making these, remember, you can customize these. What happens if you have a big face? Um, not everybody needs a three and a half inch or three inch mask, right? Maybe your face is bigger and you need a bigger mask. That's okay. Make yourself a bigger mask, um, you know, and you'll be more comfortable and you're more likely to wear it. And that's what's important, okay? So... Uh, maybe you need a four inch mask so make one you know per the directions um, 
uh, make one further directions even you know you could even mock it up in paper right um, see how it feels if you've got some like um, paper around or uh, maybe don't use your fancy fabric if you're planning if you want one that's really decorative you should wear it you know maybe you want to use um, less decorative fabric at first and see if it fits you well so there you go pleats so I'm going to come back I'm going to go ahead and iron this down so that it's nice and in place and then we're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance down the sides and that will secure these in place so I'll be right back all right so I pressed my mask and you can see my pleats are nicely pressed now and it's um it's all nicely pressed fabric it's nice and firm um, and as I talked about before the quarter inch seam allowance on my machine I know that's right here where my needle comes down to the inside of my presser foot so I'm going to run all the way down this side and the other side with this quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so let's look at what we've done now. So do you see we have the pleats? And see how it expands so it'll cover our face? See that? Okay. So now the next steps for this particular pattern is to take your ties, right? You're gonna fold your, fold your, your, you're working directly from the pattern. You don't already have bias tape. You have cut two one half inch by 34 inch strips of, of fabric. And you're going to fold those in half so they'd be a, a three three quarter inches wide and then you're going to open the tie back up and then you're going to fold each edge in to meet the middle right and then you would press so they would end up being um, three eighths of an inch wide and that's what's happened i've already done that here with my bias tape so um this is already done i um i think that folding everything in half is easily and and this is a um was made for quilt binding so it's uh, uh anyway i took some care in making that and it's done but i think it'll be pretty with this it matches nicely so what's going to happen is you're going to have to find the middle of this this is now the tie so you're going to find the middle and to do that you just fold uh fold this in half and there's your middle okay i'm going to mark that so now what's going to happen is i'm going to take my mask right and with the I, I do it with the pleats down because that's how it's going to open up around the face okay so pleats down and I and I say down pointed towards me align the center of the tie with the side of the mask so I know if I put that there this is the center of my mask and I'm going to just fit this in and make it come up nice and snug against the side of it like that 
and you're going to pin this on to hold it, hold it still. So go in and pin. Okay. Do what makes um, you comfortable with the sewing. If you need to use more pins or less pins or whatever, that's totally okay. Um, the point is that you are able to do the project with your comfort level and it's not, though it's a stressful time, it doesn't make you stressed out. So you're going to tuck it back in, and this is probably a better way to show you. You're going to tuck this in, right? Slide it right up against the fold, fold it down, and then you're going to secure it. So to do that, I'm just going to tuck that up and hold it still and tuck the pin in. Okay. So now you have basically, it's like a little, a little H, right? You've got your ties going up, this pin in the middle, they're even on both sides. And you're going to sew down the edge of the tie, which is going to secure these rajas on the inside, right? Those rajas are in there. And uh, right here, right, you're going to sew down on this edge. You're going to keep very close to the edge. And you're going to come down here where the seam is. And remember, this is, that's how much room you have, right? So you want to go over that quarter inch seam allowance here. And let me get my little measuring thing so you can see what I'm talking about. Here is quarter inch so you need to sew on the other side of that seam to trap the fabric in so you're going to sew come in and sew down here so you're going to sew the entire length of the tie all the way down okay on both sides and at the end of the tie what i'm going to end up doing is i'm going to fold it down once and i'm going to fold it down twice on both ends just like you see drawstrings and pants right and you're going to go ahead and do that. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and we're sewing again straight down this edge, right? And I'm using a straight stitch because I want to have the least amount of flap between these two. <laughs> I don't want them to be coming apart like really wide, right? I want them to stay together as a tie. So I'm going to be coming um, to the edge.
All right, the very final thing, like I was talking about, is we want to know what the inside and the outside of the mask is. So, um, again, when you put this on, the pleats go down, um, right? So it opens up correctly, but you want to know the inside and the outside. So I'm going to actually make um, uh, here a little indication of what's in and out. It says now on the front of it, handmade. Okay, here's the final step, and it's how to put your mask on. Um, make sure it's arranged properly, and you're going to tie around your neck first. Not, Don't choke yourself. And then this will automatically hook under your chin. Bring it up over your nose. And then tie behind your head towards the top. There you go, and you can tighten if you want to, uh, tighten your neck or whatever, and it's on. So that's Mask Couture for you, and I hope you get some use out of this tutorial. Certainly, um, if you're making these masks, check and see if your local, um, if your neighbors need some, or if your local hospitals need any to support what's going on. And uh, yeah, there you have it. <laughs> Take care, everybody, and I hope you have a wonderful day and a good weekend. Bye.